Hey, what's going on everyone? On this video, I just wanted to wrap up my AWS quick study series. I took my cloud practitioner exam and successfully passed on the first try. I, I would say I studied about three weeks for this cloud practitioner. And I thought I'd just share with um, any of you who might be also studying for it, my approach. Uh, I took a pretty bare bones approach to it, um, having had some IT experience in the past and worked in software and um, you know studied for coding interviews and knowing a little bit about um, system design. So I think that uh, made the test a lot more easier. So what I did was I just used the official study material that Amazon provided. So here, this AWS Cloud Practitioner Essentials. And I watched all the videos and I took notes and I actually translated some of those notes into videos, which you can watch on my channel. And so I just went through all the videos like that. Some of them were pretty dry. I mean, maybe it's not as uh, exciting as some of the paid courses that you can get on like Udemy or uh, Linux Academy or all those. Yeah, so this one right here, the Cloud Practitioner Essentials. Um, I just went through all the videos yeah, and then so that was that was the main bulk of my studying, and then I went to yeah, and then and then I went to uh, Udemy and I took this AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner uh, course, which has full, six full practice tests. So this was actually really important taking these tests and taking them like a real test without looking up anything. I highly recommend doing this because. The official Amazon training is going to cover some things, but there's also some things that it doesn't cover, which will be asked about on the exam. And the best way to get a sense of what those things are is gonna be by going through these exams. So there's some details that you, they don't really cover in the, in the videos regarding like different tiers of S3 or regarding the differences between support plans even some services are completely not mentioned at all, maybe EMR or Elastic MapReduce, but you very well may be asked about that on the exam. So taking these practice exams is a really, really good step. If you feel confident, if you feel confident that you've kind of grokked what those videos are talking about and you have a sense, and you've also done some independent reading. So, you know, the white papers are mentioned a lot too. The white papers are definitely good. I didn't really read in depth through all the white papers, but when I when I found something on one of these exams that I had not heard about at all or that I was really shaky on, I would just click on the corresponding white link paper and just read a little bit and just kind of like get a sense of, 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 of what that is. I think with that approach, you stand a very good uh, shot of passing the exam. Granted, of course, with the main caveat that if you have some experience in software and some experience in um, system design if you you know have a web server what a web server is how web services work then you don't need to do too much studying to pass the cloud practitioner exam a little bit of memorization but nothing now if you're coming from a non-technical background then i've heard really good things about some of these online courses such as the linux academy or some of the udemy ones and by all means do that to get more and more uh, context about what AWS is. But overall, the Cloud Practitioner exam, I found it to be not very difficult at all. Uh, that might be a very different story for the, the associate level certificate. So uh, eventually I plan to do those as well, but it's going to take a little bit more studying. So if you have any questions, feel free to shoot them to me. If you like this or if you have any other ideas, uh, please leave a comment or like. And best of luck on your Cloud Practitioner journey.